As promised in the last video, we continue with lip sync. I happily admit that I am not the lip sync master. However, with the post library full of phonemes and the animations layer add on, it's easy to stay focused and keep the overview. And you can have so much fun during animation lip sync. First, let's open the video sequence editor. It will be quite difficult to lip sync without sound. Also, at the bottom, you can find the playback settings to make your audio sync better with the frame rate. For now, try sync to audio. While we're here anyway, check scrubbing. This will allow us to drag the cursor over the timeline and hear the sound that way too. In the sequencer, add your audio file, navigate to it, and make sure it starts when it's supposed to. In this menu, you can add the waveform, which instantly makes you the dopest animator. I like the visual representation of the post library, which I dock here on the left. If you want this too, split the screen. Switch that window to the asset browser and open up or import your post library. You don't have any poses yet? Okay, let's make some. Select your controls. Stick to the ones you only need. I will show you a reference to how the poses will look in a second. When you're done with your first pose, check if you have all controls selected, then find the pose library here on the right. Bang, use the selected controls to create your new pose. Now this image is not as apparent as the other. You see, this image is taken from the active camera when we hit the button. I keyed the position of the camera so I could come back and take a mock shot every time I wanted. <laughs> now it's easy enough. When we move over to the left window, make it bigger, so there is room for the side panel, which you can access using the end key or that tiny arrow if you can find it. Rename the pose and use this recycle symbol to take a new preview. Spam click the pose images to change the pose. A double click should be enough. I'm slowly getting blind, so I go for large previews. No, medium. Not that blind. Now let's see what phonemes, yup, phonemes you need. Create as many as you like, but these are the essential ones. These shapes don't have to be perfect, you can always tweak them while animating. Cause I'm at an all time. For this tutorial, I'll work on the first 100 frames or so. It's usually best to focus on a small section of a larger animation. It can be overwhelming to tackle the whole thing at once. With everything but the face controllers hidden, we can find our pose bones. Right click on one of your pose assets and choose Select Pose Bones. To continue the workflow of the previous video and keep a nice overview of our animation, we can add a lip sync animation layer. If you don't have this add-on, you can download it through the Blender Market. The link is in the description. This is an affiliate link that earns me a small commission at no extra cost of you. Okay, set the first keyframes. For these, I'll keyframe all channels. Double tap the shape in your pros library to switch between them. I start with a closed mouth shape and open to a U sound. At the apex of the word cause, there is an ah sound. This shape, however, is not a full ah shape like we have in our pros library. To get the shape we need, we must blend the R shape with the shape before. Then find a frame on the timeline that has the shape closest to what you need and set a keyframe. Now replace the U shape with the blended shape we just created. We can use the A ah sound to begin saying I'm. To close the word cause, use a consonant sound from your repose library. This shape can also be an S sound. Just as we did before, I'm going to blend the S sound, this time with an E, create space between the S and the E sound and find your perfect blend to keyframe. So that this new keyframe can be used instead of the regular consonant S from our post library. Let's ease out of the S shape by placing a consonant shape, listen carefully to your track. Sign, sign. The part I am, I'm, is made up of the sound A, E, M. I'm. Of course, this is ridiculously exaggerated. To make the transition between those mouth shapes more gradual, let's blend the E shape with the before mentioned A shape. The normal E shape at the end now is the perfect in between from this to our M shape. Here I create another in between and move around some frames around it so that we have manual control over the spacing here. The next part is add. For the opening of the mouth, 
we can blend an A shape with an E shape. If your blend is not good enough, you can always use this blended pose to create a new blend again and tone it down even more. For now, I just hold this pose. Later you can make it a moving hold over an ease out. The T sound can be very depending on the surrounding shapes. If you can't find the right shapes, listen to the sound by either playing back or scrub through the timeline. Sometimes when I don't find the right shape straight away, I'll place the closest thing I can manage there as a placeholder. Because the aim is to get the first pass done as soon as possible. It's easier to spot a mistake and tweak when you've got something on the timeline. I know this can sound obvious, but it happens to everybody. You get lost in a specific section and lose time finicking to get it right. Sometimes the poses are just a starting point. They get you 90% there. Here I feel like the A shape isn't reading well enough, so I adjust the upper lips to show the teeth a bit more. Cause I'm at an Sometimes the tongue should touch the upper teeth to create an L shape and the mouth opens to anticipate the next mouth shape. Using the same principles I'll work through the rest of the animation because we're not ready yet and the fun part is still to come. So finish the lip sync layer or at least this section you're working on. Animation layers doesn't work flawlessly with the in-betweener in Blender. That's unfortunate. You don't have to do this, but for this video I'll make a new layer to add some emotions on top of your character. Using the mouth controls, we can add a frown, smile, sneer, or whatever is fitting for your animation. Cause I'm at an also here you see me lower the influence to steal a pose from the layers below which can be copied and pasted into the emotions layer without any problems. Now the character looks sad to start with and fairly neutral when he starts to sing. Cause I'm at an the rest of his demeanor will betray his mood. So for readability, I keep the shapes neutral here. Then ending on the M sound here, I want to ease into a sad version of the M. A couple of frames in front of this pose is where a whole frame of the neutral state should be keyframed. When the other characters join in, the main character's mood increases and we can allow a subtle smile to come through here. Raise the corners of his mouth and pull them around the teeth a bit more. Cause I'm at an Let's also create a new animation layer to animate the face details. When your mouth opens, the cheeks should come in. Because of the stretch, you lose some volume here. That's not the only detail we can animate on this layer. Let's add some blink animations. I created a closed eye pose asset already to speed up things while animating. Some blinks are open to close and back straight away. So for the first one, I wanted a more deliberate blink. So with a frame or two to hold in the middle, I think that comes across nicely. Then duplicate the blink and maybe get rid of the whole frames in the middle. Then distribute these blinks strategically. Where should you add a blink? A good rule of thumb is fast, fast and or big head movements usually go paired with a closing of the eyes. The face becomes much more animated when we animate the eyebrows. You can match the up and down motion with the blinks. Experiment with sad brows or relaxed ones. Scowl if you have to. This is where you can have fun with your animation. Asymmetry is crucial to create organic feeling animations. Even if it is subtle, the break in symmetry creates contrast and interest. Try to follow the line of action when you break symmetry for the most appealing poses. And that should be enough to lead to a final awesome animation. Cause I'm at an You are well on your way. In addition, I'm going to suggest this video next with another essential skill that will make your animation look much better. As always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.